What's happening guys? Kenny here again. And today I've got another hype versus reality for you. And what that's gonna be about today is this guy. That's right folks. I know some of you have been waiting for this one. Uh, this is the Para 3 Lightweight from Spyderco. Uh, with BD1 and steel. And of course the Lightweight FRN handles. Uh, this is made at their, um, <clears throat> the Colorado factory. So, USA Earth, Golden, Colorado. And, uh, yeah, what, first things first, I do want to give a shout out and thank you to River's Edge Cutlery. Uh, they did help me get this guy and they are always going above and beyond for their customers. Um, always, you know, just a family owned business that you really get to deal with like one guy. You're not going to be dealing with... A different person each time you call them and stuff like that it's just a small family-owned company that's just really just focuses on the customer service and just taking care of everybody so um, really appreciate it guys and if you guys haven't checked out uh, Rivers Edge Cutlery like go check them out they got a new website they're just um, yeah great company and they always seem to have like really good prices you know and um, they, all, they don't always have the most in stock of each knife, but they seem to get in stock what, what the community's asking for. You know what I mean? They do a good job. Not to mention they have some sweet sprint runs every now and then. So, yes, yeah. this is the lightweight version of the infamous Para 3. And, you know, I've had this guy for a while now, and I finally feel, like, comfortable with giving you guys a full review of it. Um, yeah, and I'm going to get right into it. Uh, I do want to preface this with saying, yes, I still have my nasty burn on my hand, and it still looks disgusting. And I hope you guys aren't too, uh, you know, off-put by that big old bruise-looking thing on my hand. So, in saying that, I'm going to go ahead and move forward into my hype versus reality. Um, go ahead and throw the specs on the page right here. Don't want to waste your guys' time spewing off a bunch of numbers. So, this is how I go about it. And then I'm going to move right along and go into some size comparisons. Um, first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and bring in another pair of three. Because obviously, it's going to be the same size. This is pretty much a carbon copy uh, with FRN handles. So, and of course, BD1 and steel. This is the... M4 uh, Blade HQ exclusive with my own customized patina on the blade and Lynch clip with custom anodizing job on it. So moving forward, I'll go ahead and bring in the native because I think that's a really good size comparison. Um, it is on the smaller side, so this is more of like a fifth pocket carry. Um, although I do carry the the um, pair of three in the fifth pocket as well. It's a little tall for the fifth pocket, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, so that's a good size comparison there. I'll go ahead and bring in a, this is a cold steel American Lawman. You can see that's a much larger knife, closer to like a PM2. Um, then we'll go ahead and bring in some uh, Benchmades. This is the 560 Freak, 560-1 Super Freak. A much larger knife and then um, bring in the bug out which we're gonna bring in a lot during this video very similar size knife to the pair of three but uh, we'll talk more about these in comparison later and um, go ahead and bring in some other brands I'm gonna bring in the wasp it's a nice budget option that really lands in that type of size range Nice work knife, similar to that. And then the Kaiser Gemini, it's just similar size knife, just slightly longer than the pair of three. Uh, then I'll also bring in MBK, which is another, uh, the MBK uh, Min Pin, which is another Laconico design. Similar size knife to the pair of three, really, if you put them butt to butt. Uh, slightly smaller again. Uh, then I'll go ahead and bring in the Chavez Ultramar Street. This is the Redemption Street. Similar size knife, a little longer than the pair of three. 
Now that we got some size comparisons out of the way, we will talk about the hype, guys. The hype on this knife. Um, this is this was a long. We, people were waiting for this for a long time. Um, they announced it, I think, in like early two thousand eighteen or mid two thousand eighteen, and it didn't come out till just recently, um, in two thousand nineteen. And yeah, it was um, really had a lot of hype going into it. Everyone was really stoked on the idea of like pretty much a Spydeco version of the the bug out, you know, um, something that was like super lightweight, everyday carry. Um, one of their best designs in the pair of three, just put into a lightweight um, option. And yeah, it was really something to look forward to. Um, it has BD one N steel, which is, um, a great steel. We don't see it very often except for, um, we see it a lot more in the, uh, kitchen cutlery arena. Um, we, you'll even hear Steve talk about it. Uh, he talked about it before this was even a thing. Uh, BD one is a good steel, but BD one N is on a different level than BD one. Even, uh, adding the nitrogen is going to add a lot. You know, that, that adds um, refinement of the grain structure, uh, smaller carbides. It's going to do a lot for the steel. So it's not BD1, guys. It's BD1N, adding nitrogen. So um, even though it's only subtly different, it's going to make a pretty big difference in the, the actual um, performance of your steel. So in saying that, um, I was excited to try that, excited to try the Para 3 in this configuration with the lightweight idea in mind um they you know they did a lot of work trying to get the ax uh the compression lock to work in such a lightweight configuration and they did a you know good job they have it connecting here because you only have the there's no liners so you only have the you know one side having that that compression lock is the only kind of metal in the handle um so that was something and then it, it was it was really cool to see i, I really wanted to see how they were going to accomplish it and um and then just wanted to see how they were going to get this done overall and <clears throat> once people started doing uh, uh reviews on it i was hearing about how the the handle scales were nicely rounded and everything was contoured very nicely and done well uh so i was excited to try it um i was actually not planning on getting it and then i heard so many people talking about oh you got to try it oh it's such a great knife and I hear all these reviews of people just freaking out on it so I was like you know what I gotta try it because everyone knows how much I love the pair of three right you guys all know how much I love the pair of three uh it's definitely one of my favorite knives it was the knife that broke me and I do love it I, I think it's a great just everything type of knife I'm um, living in California in areas where they they only allow three inch blade. It's a perfectly three inch blade, so it just fits right in that um, you know everyday carry status as far as that goes. Really, just all around, I just wanted to get you know I want, I needed to try it because I I love the pair of three, so uh, that was part of the hype for me was just you know the fact that I love the pair of three, and um, yeah and. As far as like, I think that pretty much does it for the hype. Uh, there was some negative hype as well, uh, being like having only one side that has metal in the pivot, um, you know, just a lot of stuff going around. Uh, BD1N steel, people talking crap about that. Um, one of the hype parts was the clip, which I think is a great hype because, um, because the Spyderco spring clip is excellent. Uh, I love the wire clip. It's it's amazingly done, and this is no exception. But I'll get more into that. So yeah, there was a lot of hype surrounding it, and I was really excited to try one. And when I got it, guys, the reality, um, yeah, I got kind of let down, to be honest. Um, not surprisingly, but I, I, I was let down. Um, there are a lot of things that they nailed. There's a lot of things that they did exactly what the community was calling for and um, what the pair of three probably should have been in the first place, you know, what, what this knife should have been in the first place, essentially. So in saying that, first I'm gonna bring these guys on the table and we're gonna talk about um, the, the things about this knife, that why they did it the way they did it. Um, and I'll do it in you know, the normal fashion. I'm gonna talk about the fit and finish of this knife. Um, the 
Fit and finish. Uh, as far as the fit, guys, when I got this knife out of box, uh, I did do a uh, first impressions and unboxing, and uh, it was well done. You know, it was perfectly centered when I got it. Um, the action was, you know, somewhat like it was a little stiff, but over time it really started to smooth out. Um, not exactly like a dropping free type of action like some of these. Like for instance, this one came with smoking um, dropping action. Uh, this one not so much, but easily swinging shut, especially after it wearing in. So not disappointed with that. This one was also nice free dropping action. So, you know, that goes back and forth. I'm not, it doesn't have to be that type of action. Uh, this one wasn't quite there, but it was really good. Um, and then, you know, as far as the other fit, there's not a lot of fit and finish here, you know, things to say. Uh, the finish, obviously, this is just an F, uh, FRN handle. Um, it's nice, though. They did a very good job machining it, and even more so than the the native, which is also from the same factory. Um, I feel like this has even more of a, just a nice finish to it. Really looks great. Love the way they did the Spider Co. Really crisp lines. Um, yeah, this one doesn't have the Spider Co. Pair of three on it. Um, I like it. It's not amazing. I like, I'm not like, oh, that's amazing or anything. I kind of like that too, just subtle. Um, we all know what that <laughs> type of knife is. Um, it's the same as far as the traction here, I feel like. Very similar. Although maybe the Para 3 is just slightly less aggressive with the traction. And you can see it's contoured much more, which is a nice touch. Um, so that rounding has really been done well. And it fits really nicely. So that was nice finishing touch. Um, one thing I'll say as far as fit and finish is this edge is kind of sharp. Um, that edge could have been knocked down just a little bit. But it's not like super bad, but it definitely noticed it in use. I noticed that hard edge in there. And it's just a slight, I mean, with just taking a file or, super, you know, ultra fine spider coat, you know, or fine spider coat, a bar from the sharp maker you could probably knock that down easily or some fine sandpaper and just knock that down and it would be perfectly fine uh, but yeah uh, the blade grind on mine was pretty good uh, this is my edge now obviously but the blade grind was pretty good and the way it's ground distal tapering was done well uh, jimping just normal stuff you know the uh, spidey hole was that normal Colorado like it's been chamfered nicely no sharp edges or anything. Um, done well. Yeah, done well as far as fit and finish is concerned. Um, I, you know, not amazing with the FRN, but just is what it is, you know. I really was happy with it at first. Um, and then, yeah, as far as uh, the action goes, I kind of talked about that already. Action's good. Not great, but good. Uh, fairly free. Easily swinging in. So that's done well, no complaints. Uh, yeah, and then the there was no blade play, you know, out of the box, no blade play. Well done in that sense, and with the centering being on. And then, yeah, as I started to use the knife, um, in use, guys, as I, in performance, you know, of the knife. Uh, I'll go ahead and put some footage on now of me cutting with the knife, but... Guys, it cut it cut like a pair of three, you know? <laughs> um, not super, there was nothing I was waiting to see as far as like ergonomics or, well, well ergonomics a little bit, but as far as like cutting ability, the cutting ability uh, is just what I would expect uh, out of a pair of three. Um, this one's not amazingly ground. It's not the thinnest grind I've had on a pair of three and it's not the thickest, I don't think but it's, it's decent, you know, it's like the 20 thousandths that we see a lot from a lot of spider codes. I actually get fairly lucky, lucky, and a lot of my spider codes are actually much smaller than that 20 degree, uh, 20 thousandths behind the edge. I think um, a lot of my pair of threes land more in that 18 thousandths behind the edge, um, maybe even less in some cases, like 17 in some cases. Um, not like the native though. The native tends to be a little bit better ground. So 
Uh, that's something to consider. I feel like the natives tend to be much thinner behind the edge. Although some of my pair of threes, I will say, um, are ground much better than others. But yeah, it's that average like 20 thousandths behind the edge. I'll come back, I'll show you. But it cut well at about 17 degrees per side is about where I put most of my, my Spyderco uh, pair of threes or even pair, you know, PM2s and stuff like that. Usually don't go 15 thousandths, I mean uh, 15 degrees per side just because I know that it's going to get thick quick on, in some cases. But yeah, it really cut well. I think the biggest thing, the BD1N was um it was took a ex extremely sharp edge took a great edge right off the bat and it was a joy to sharpen it sharpened extremely quickly i reprofiled it with 600 grit which you know i'm so used to like sharpening these uh high carbide steels and like you know these much harder steels and this felt like a breeze compared to all that of course when you're sharpening nothing but you know four uh four v and m m4 and and uh, 20 CV and like all these other steels that tend to be harder and more carbides, uh, harder carbides involved in the cutting. Um, yeah, this was like a breeze and it sharpened really well. It was, you know, splitting hairs easily, both directions, I think, for sharpening. So it did, it did well. Um, although what I did notice in use is that it went dull pretty quickly. Um, although I am used to using, you know, more extreme steels, I felt like this dulled quicker than I expected it to watching like edge retention tests with BD1N and, and, um, and seeing like most people's reviews of it. I don't know if my example is softer or if um, maybe I just had a burnt edge. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys back. I don't have a whole lot of cutting um, video here, but yeah, I mean, as far as my example, I think maybe they had burnt the edge or something cause it did not hold an edge well. Although now I'm on my second edge and it feels like it's better. It felt like it held it a little better and it stropped back much easier. Um, strops back super easy. I think uh, the, the steel I would almost compare this to and a steel that actually people give a bad rap that I think is a great steel is VG10. Um, this is very similar to like VG10 or a 9CR uh, MOV. I think it's I think it's done really, you know, it's like one of those steels where it's super easy to sharpen, but it holds an edge really well and strops back amazingly, guys. Uh, you could strop this back, use it, use it, strop it, use it, strop it, probably, you know, 10 times before you'd have to really put an edge on it. Um, and I mean, I didn't actually do it 10 times, but... I feel like you could at least do it four or five times before you'd have to have to put an edge on it. Uh, it strops back super easy and takes a really keen edge on stropping back. So really, really happy with the stropping process, but kind of disappointed with my overall um, edge retention on my first edge at least. Um, better on the second edge, but still not super impressive. So I look forward to like subsequent edges and getting it, um, you know, removing some of that fatigue steel proper, uh, probably. Uh, and I'm also going to send this to have it HRC tested and see where it's at there because I'm eager to see where that is. I think they target like 58 to 60 with BD1N, but I'm not sure. I know other nitrogen steels uh, tend to want to be like, I mean, they tend to like perform really well on a lower, on the lower end of the HRC. So yeah, um, I wouldn't be even surprised if this was in the 58 range and, you know, it just nitrogen steels there's there's other stuff going on you know and it's a lot of grain structure involved and stuff like that so I'm not super surprised if it would come up low and still perform uh and saying that uh really happy um happy with the performance at least of the bd1n except for that i feel like there is some burnt fatigued steel there and I really want to take care of that and, and give it some subsequent sharpenings. That's also why I gave this another sharpening, gave it some more time. Because the second edge was much better than the first edge. And I feel like in subsequent sharpenings, we're going to get even better. So uh, that's also why I don't do these hype versus realities, you know, right off the bat. You know, after not even, use, not even sharpening and using and sharpening the knife. Because I feel like it, it doesn't do it justice. Um, and, and then break-in times and a lot of other things that, that come into play. Uh, as far as design goes on this knife and the, the choices they made and the execution of it um, compared to the pair of three. 
uh, the regular pair of three. Um, what I would say is, uh, like for instance, this chamfering, guys, the chamfering. Why don't they do that here? What the hell, Spider Co. Constant quality um, improvement. Come on, guys. Just champ for this, like this. Or even like the, the military. I don't have the military with me right now, but the military has more chamfering than the Para 3 and the PM2. Why? Why? Why, Spider Co? Um, so yeah, so why don't they champ for this like this? Uh, the hole. The lanyard hole. Why didn't they do that on this? They don't even need to put a pipe going across like they do. They don't even need the actual tube. Just put a hole. I, I wouldn't mind. I know a lot of guys wouldn't mind if it was just a hole. So, uh, yeah, I'm not super excited. Um, I mean, I love the fact that they did it there. And I don't love where they put the... I don't, I don't even use lanyards, so I don't need a lanyard hole. But it, for the guys that do want one... Um, that's a much better location. I know they might have some difficulty with where the, see where the liners attach to the, the G10, like how they're nested there. Maybe that's why they don't do that. But either way, I, I think just either delete that or move it. Um, like this one, it's much better. Uh, the wire clip, yeah, you guys know I, I change that clip all the time. Uh, I don't have my S90V one that has the, the standard clip on it. Uh, it's, it's in my my knife uh, case, but yeah, much better clip, guys. I love the wire clip, and this is a well done one. Some of them are soft. Uh, this one is not soft. It's got great retention. Um, slips in and out of the pocket amazingly. It's right on that spidey, that flat spot, so it slips in really easy. Extremely well done. Um, great, great clip, guys. Love that touch. And if they did that on this home run all day long. Um, although I don't know how that would, you know, with the G10. Might be a little more complicated. I don't know. Um, but just one more, you know, choice that seemed like a great option and made this knife even better than the original. Um, as far as the way that they did the weight reduction and the way they did all that... Um, uh, this is the same stock, guys, just so you know. Um, same stock thickness. Although it does slightly look thinner. That might just be this example. Uh, I'll get the calipers out in a second. But, yeah, uh, weight reduction. Uh, th these are fully lined. Normal pair of threes. Uh, the liners, even though they come up a little bit, they do go all the way back. You can see there, they go all the way back to the back. And they're nested, so you don't get a real thick handle. Uh, pretty much the same thickness as far as uh, lightweight to, to regular. I don't think there's any, it's not thinner here. But um, on the lightweight, you have no liners, guys, until you get to on the side where the, the, um, the compression lock is you have you have a nested liner there but on the other side you do not if you look from here see if I can get it to focus and show you you have um, a washer on one side and not the other um, you guys have probably heard this a lot now but I'm just gonna reiterate sorry about hitting the camera here guys I'm gonna fix that um, I'm gonna reiterate, bad choice, guys. Bad choice, Spider Co. Um, I, I can't stipulate this enough. How important sometimes having something on both sides can be. You know what I mean? Yeah, sometimes it works to have something on one side and not the other. In a, in a case of a pivot, guys, I don't see that being the case. This thing has already got an immense amount of play now. Side to side. Not so much up and down, guys. Uh, up and down is still solid for me. But the play going back and forth, it, it got bad quick, guys. And I haven't, I haven't taken this apart, haven't tried to fix it. Um, I did tighten it a little bit, but um, even with the action like this, it's still got play. 
And look at that centering now. You guys probably already were yelling at me going, that thing's not centered. Yeah, it went off quickly, guys, after I got it and started using it. When I was just flipping it, no issues. No issues with the centering. As soon as I started using it and pushing it through materials and stuff, I started getting centering issues, um, blade play. Uh, guys, it doesn't have liners on both sides. It does... They could have just put like a partial liner here or something, you know, but do something to make it stronger or honestly, guys, I'll get to what I think they should do anyways in the end. But um, I mean, obviously, it's just my opinion. But when you want to compare it, you'll see a, guy, a lot of guys bring out the bug out and compare it. Guys, um, they only have partial liners here, but they're on both sides. I got my flashlight right here, my my little uh, drop flashlight. This is mass drop, drop now. So you guys see, it's partial liners, but they're on both sides. You guys know if you if you have one of these, uh, just much better made. You know, just much better. Um, just all around, guys in my opinion. Um, I'm a big bug out fan. I really do love this knife. I, I think the name's kind of ridiculous. It's not a bug out knife necessarily. But um, as far as like execution of a design and trying to figure out how to make something super lightweight and still super, um, you know, just very uh, dependable and also um, getting all the work done that you need. I think this is just so much, so much better guys. And you get a much more solid design that's just not going to, you know, it's not going to get the problems that something like this has. Uh, the, the compression lock, I understand that they wanted to use the compression lock. But in a format like this, guys, it just doesn't work properly, guys. It's, it's just not done well like this. Use a different lock. Why? I have a question, guys. This is, this is one of the things that kind of bugs me a little bit. You got the Manix. You got a Manix that's it's, it's a great G10 version, and then they made a lightweight version. And they used this lock on it, you know, this, this ball bearing lock. And it made it much lighter, made it just as strong. Why didn't they use this lock on this knife? Maybe it's not thick enough or something. This seems like it's the same thickness. Why didn't they use this lock on this? Um, this is a much better um, accomplished knife that's much more sturdy just a much better lightweight option and um, amazing action. Why didn't they use this? Why didn't they use the ball bearing on that? It would have made much more sense to use the ball bearing lock. But maybe that's just my opinion. Um, I, I just don't understand it. Uh, and then when we're talking about uh, the, just the overall, like, like for instance, the carry in the pocket. You guys saw the, the, the clips, awesome, okay? Uh, I gotta say, the clip, they did a really good thing there. Um, obviously, I always go to like a MXG clip or a, a Lynch clip. That's that's because I don't like the, the stock clip. And more for the ergonomics than the carry, to be honest with you guys, um, in the hand. Okay, so 2.44, guys. 3.4. Three point four two. Three point four. For one ounce, we've gotten rid of all the liners, guys. I don't know. That's. I'd rather have the ounce, to be honest with you. This thing doesn't feel like that much lighter in my hand or in my pocket than this. This feels more sturdy. Has a better um, balance point. Feels like just a better knife all around. Um, this is blade heavy. Um, it doesn't feel like it, it, it coincides. It doesn't feel like it works together. Um, this is like just an all around perfect knife to me. Um, except for, take these things. Do this chamfering here. Um, figure out a better way to do the clip. You know, Even just get rid of the, clip, uh, the, the, the um, lanyard too. Bring the clip up into that nook, done. Happy, I'm happy with that. Even, um, it, it's just there's a there's just things that like 
I just, I think they missed. They, they swung and they missed on this knife, to be perfectly honest, guys. Um, I do want to thank, um, you know, I do want to thank River's Edge Cutlery for getting me this knife um, and for all their awesome customer service, the way that they're just an awesome company. I want to thank them again because that was awesome. They just go above and beyond for everyone, and they're a rad company um, that's very customer service orientated. But in saying that, uh, Spider Co. missed for me on this one, guys. Uh, for me, a lot of guys love it. Um, a lot of guys are really loving the, the, the lightweight, and it gets a lot of positive reviews. Uh, for me personally, um, the bug out wins every time. Uh, I would I would say that the only thing that the bug out necessarily doesn't quite win on is this is a little easier going in and out of the pocket with the Spyderco um, wire clip and where it's positioned on the FRN. Uh, this is just a little bit harder to get in and out. Uh, the retention's really tight. It's on the FRN, um, you know, on the texturing. But in saying that, with a, such a lightweight knife, because this is so much lighter, you know, this is, um, this is, you're looking at uh, one point, yeah, 1.87. So you're talking, you know, significantly lighter than the pair of three lightweight. And with such a light knife that could easily like get flung out of your pocket, especially if it's in lightweight, like gym shorts or something. So having this kind of retention, I like it. Uh, especially in my pajama pants, it's not going to just fling out or like <laughs> this, this thing's in my pajama pants all the time, guys. So having this in my pajama pants, it's just not going anywhere. So I kind of like that extra retention on this, this clip. Um, this one's got great retention and it's not really going anywhere and it goes in and out much easier. But, um, yeah, there's just, just one thing I think that that, that might have over the bug out, but for the most part, this knife wins every time, guys. And I think that uh, Spyderco just kind of, uh, just on a lot of things, they kind of missed here. And I was a little disappointed, um, which I actually was expecting, to be honest. Uh, that's that's kind of like, I had some negative hype going into it, personally, because of uh, some of the reviews I saw, some of the, just the, it wasn't even the reviews I saw and what they said, it was just what I was seeing in their reviews. like the things that they were showing, even if they were positive in their reviews, the things that they were showing, just I could see just being negative. Um, something that's gonna become a problem, like only one washer and how now my centering's just hugging one side where the washer's not. Uh, makes sense. You know, sy symmetry is important in a lot of things. Symmetry is, is important. So, uh, anyways, um, I... I I don't like doing negative review gu reviews, guys, but um, I am honest, and you're going to get the, the truth, whether it be what you want to hear um, or not, but it's just me. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope that um, you got something from this, and yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day, guys. Thanks a lot to River's Edge Cutlery again, and I'll see you guys on the next one.